In the field of aviation, World War II brought many innovations. Both the Allied and the Nazi Germany worked on many futuristic designs which were impossible to create with technology of the time. But still, they kept on pushing the limits of the technology of the time. One such example were flying wing aircrafts. In the late 1940s, Britain attempted to deploy a flying wing aircraft with the Armstrong Whitworth AW-52. This was not the first time that the flying wings were explored as a potential aircraft design. Hugo Jonkers in 1910s, the Horton brothers in the 1930s and 40s, the Soviets in 1930s and the Americans in the 1940s with their Northrop YB-49 explored the potential of flying wing bombers. The Northrop B-2 Spirit was the result of this passion in the 1980s. The start of the World War II put a halt to many commercial aircraft design concepts but it did hasten the pace of aviation research and development. Armstrong Whitworth envisioned a flying wing airliner with four or six jet engines and a huge aircraft to accommodate the projected passenger. By 1943, it was widely anticipated that the jet engines would be future of commercial aviation travel. The AW-52G was a wooden glider planned to be half the size of the jet-powered AW-52 prototype. It was planned to have a maximum takeoff weight of roughly 20,000 pounds, which is similar to the lifting capacity of the current Boeing 737. To test the concept of wooden glider half the size of the jet-powered AW-52 prototype was developed. The wooden glider was created and constructed in the 1943. It flew for the first time in 1945 with a wingspan of 53 feet 10 inches. It was more basic than the subsequent jet-powered prototypes. But its major objective was to establish general flying and load speed handling characteristics. The glider was launched at a height of 20,000 feet, enabling for a 30-minute flight. It had an automatic pitch control system comprised of correctors installed between the main wing structure and the ailerons. This method was required to address the issue of flaps on set flying wings creating dangerous trim changes. High power flap circumstances might be adjusted manually. Armstrong Whitworth was awarded a contract to build two AW-52 jet-powered prototypes for testing purposes. The AW-52 was an all-metal turbojet-powered aircraft with a 90-foot wingspan and a 20,000-pound takeoff weight. The prototypes had a large luggage area behind the cockpit and a maximum takeoff weight of 34,000 pounds, prompting consideration for the AW-52 to be utilized as a postal carrier. The jet prototype shared a sweeping wing of 35 degrees with a straight line trailing edge with the gliders that came before them. The wingtips had fins and rudders, while roll and pitch were controlled by ailerons that extended inwards from the wingtips across the majority of the trail edge outer sweeping section. The ailerons operated as elevators and they were complex surfaces which adjusted tabs and hinges not from the wings but from the correctors which supplied pitch trim. The AW-52 jet was intended to maintain laminar flow across its wings. Armstrong Whitworth opted to create costly and very accurate farmers similar to those used in high-performance sailplane wings and to produce the top and lower surfaces independently. Each former was fixed with a stress skin of alloy sheet and a corrugated inner skin was attached as stringers and ribs. The construction was so perfect that four people were dedicated to painting the RAF roundels on the wings which were generally found on the test aircraft. This was because the thickness of the paint on the wing surface would be damaging. The AW-52 was planned and built using the centrifugal flow jets but British development in axial flow jets were not equal to the task. The first prototype designated as the TS-363 was built by the end of 1946 but because continued issues with the hydraulic system, the first flight did not take place until the 1947. The engines of the first and the second prototypes were different. On December 16, 1947, representatives of the government press and the aviation industry gathered at the RAF Bridgewell to observe the Whitworth Chief Test Pilot Squadron Leader Eric Franklin take the AW-52 up for a demonstration flight. The response from the government and the press was overwhelmingly positive. And Franklin flew the plane in close formation with the Avro Lincoln bomber for Flight Magazine. However, the flying wing's flutter speed was revealed to be lower than projected, restricting the aircraft to a peak speed of just 300 mph, which was far lower than the predicted speed of 500 mph. 
On May 30, 1949, test pilot Joe Lancaster witnessed a pitch oscillation produced by the dreaded wing flutter. This oscillation began at an uncomfortable 2 cycle per second and quickly rose in frequency to incapacitating levels, anticipating impeding and deadly structural breakdown. Lancaster ejected using the aircraft's Martin Baker ejection seat. Lancaster became the first British pilot to eject in a genuine emergency, establishing the efficiency of the ejection seat which would later save the lives of countless servicemen and others all across the globe. Joe was lucky to be the only person aboard the aeroplane because the second crew member was not furnished with an ejection seat. Due to this event, Armstrong Withward abandoned the flying wing concept and instead focused on more traditional AW-55 propeller turbine aircraft. The second AW-52 was handed over to the Royal Aircraft Establishment at Farnborough where it was used for experimental flights until it was scrapped in 1954.